132. saying necessity is the mother of invention. The saying may be applied to the service of nine lessons and carols. In 1880, Edward White Benson, Bishop of Truro, England, realized a traditional Christmas Eve service was not possible in his parish because of construction on the new cathedral which was not yet completed. So he invented the service, this service, in which we are about to participate. The chapel at King's College in Cambridge picked up the tradition in 1918, and it was first broadcast on the BBC in 1928. Except for the year 1930, this service has been broadcast or televised every year, and it goes around the world, and it's televised and broadcast by the BBC. Today, for our service, you need three things. Number one, you need your nine lessons and carols. And you need to follow these. These must be in your hands because we will not tell you what to do. The second thing you'll need, and you might as well take it out and keep it in your lap, is the second most important book to, for Martin Luther, and that's your hymnal. And the third thing you need 
is your voice. Be ready to become a choir and sing and make a joyful noise unto God. With that, would you stand and sing with me once in Royal David City. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden on a, in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man. Where are you? He answered. I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said... Who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you've done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you've done this, Cursed are you above all livestock and wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel.
of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declared the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession over the cities and of your enemies, and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed, because you have obeyed me. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of deep darkness. A light has dawned. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over the kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on forever. The, the zeal of the, of the Lord, Lord Almighty will accomplish this.
A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and of understanding. The spirit of counsel and of might. The spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord. And, and he, he will delight in the, in the fear, fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes. Or decide by what he hears with his ears. But with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt, and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, the young child will put his hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea.
In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin, pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you're highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. But how will this be, since I'm a virgin? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. Hey! 
were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He's the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory, Glory to, to God, God in the highest heaven, and, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger.
After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasure and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light. So that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own. But his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of a husband's will, but, but born, born of God. God. The word was made flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory. The glory of the one and only Son. who came from the Father, full, full of, of grace and, and truth. truth.
rise with me. Now we'll pray as Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
It is my privilege to place a blessing upon you this day. I would like to bless you in the name of the Father who sits on the throne, who holds the world in his hands. He is good, he is kind, he is loving. I want to give you a blessing from Jesus Christ who came to this place to save us. I also want to give you a blessing from the Holy Spirit who lives in us to help us to walk and talk as we travel this week in his name. May God give you rest and peace and joy in this season to come. God bless you.